high and in previous two key areas looked at how the immune system protects us from pathogens by making the B and T lymphocytes and building up memory cells. So in this one we're going to take a look at what is a vaccine and how does that also help to protect us from these pathogens. So one way to build immunity is how we've already discussed through being exposed to the pathogen, becoming ill and then surviving, which is a very effective method so long as you do actually survive. So vaccination gives us another way to develop that immunity by exposing our immune system to these antigens, thus triggering an immune response and the generation of those memory cells and getting that long-term protection. So there's different ways that we can introduce the antigens to our immune system. That can either be through inactivated pathogen toxins. So particularly bacteria, for example, might produce toxins, which will have antigens that we can respond to. It, they could be introduced via a dead pathogen, so the antigen's intact, but the pathogen has been killed. Or you might be able to just use part of the pathogen or even a weakened form of it. So exposing the immune system to the antigen without risking the infection itself. You trigger the immune response, you get your clonal selection, and importantly, the buildup of these really important memory cells so that if you do ever then encounter the pathogen in your environment, you've already got that memory of what to do, and we can go straight to the secondary response. Another feature of vaccines is these antigens are normally mixed with something known as an adjuvant during the production of the vaccine. So this is a substance that will make that vaccine more effective, so enhance our immune response. So it's the antigens that triggers the reaction and the adjuvant which boosts or enhances that reaction. So we've got a mixture of past paper questions, some knowledge and a problem solving question. So pause the video, have a go of these questions and hit play when you want to reveal the answers. So the first question we have, explain why vaccination against polio would not provide immunity against the influenza virus. Well, this is because of the antigens. Remember, antigens are unique to each pathogen. Therefore, the memory cells would only be effective against one type of antigen. So the polio and influenza viruses have these different antigens. So we would need separate vaccinations. Second question, you're asked to explain why vaccines usually contain an adjuvant. So what's their purpose? Why would we include those? So remember that's about enhancing or improving the immune response, the antibody production, makes the immune response work better or last longer, or it improves the effectiveness of the vaccine, okay, bit much better longer. Enhances would be another acceptable term. Just make sure to be clear that it boosts, it makes it effective, it enhances, but it's not what triggers the immune response itself. And the final question, we have a graph showing that the number of cases of a uh, whooping cough over the decades and you were asked to use information from the graph to state the year in which a vaccine for whooping cough was introduced. So we're looking at the numbers and what we would expect to see after a vaccine is introduced is disease rates uh, plummet or come right down from where they peak. So in this case, they would accept either uh, 55 or 56. So we see we've got some changes here and it going up again. But we can see towards the, the mid-50s, that after that point, cases have come down dramatically. 
So we would still expect variations over the years for different reasons, but generally after a vaccine is introduced, the disease rates become much, much lower. So I hope this was a clear and short introduction to how vaccines work. If you do have any questions, please let me know.